So in this video we're going to continue with the valve gear and we're going to make this uh, rocking shaft. The plans for this model actually give you a choice of valve gear. You can use either what they call slip eccentric uh, valve gear or uh, gab valve gear. This is the gab valve gear. Now I believe the full size engine originally had a slip eccentric valve gear. Um, with a foot pedal on the uh, foot plate to change from forward to reverse. And then later on on a rebuild it was converted to a gab valve gear. From a model making point of view I believe the gab valve gear is a lot more interesting. And it's true to the locomotive as it actually is at the moment in the Liverpool Museum. So this is the detail for the uh, rocking shaft. So we've got an end view and a sectional view. The drawing shows it in three separate components braced together as a fabrication. But I'm going to do it as one piece in stainless steel. So I've made up my blocks. I machine these up on the shaper. First operation is to put this 732 uh, reamed hole through the centre. So we could do that in a drilling machine quite easily. We could also do it in the milling machine or we can do it on the lathe in a four jaw chuck. I quite like four jaw chuck work so I think we'll uh, do it in the lathe. So I just want to break the edge of the hole at the bottom of this uh, recess. So I've got a 90 degree um, centre drum. So I can't see what we're doing but we'll just try and feed that in. Until we get some resistance about there. Another touch, that's it. Oh, that looks good. Okay, we may as well uh, drill a position for this hole here. And I think we'll do that in the drilling machine. It's a nice little job for the drill. So I've turned up a little uh, mandrel to put in a drilling machine chuck to help centralize the job and get a zero zero coordinate. Okay, so we've got our zero zero. So I've got some slip gauges here, made up to nine sixteenths of an inch. So we just need to push that forward, put in the slip gauges, bring it back. It's good. Clamp the vise.
Should be good to go. Okay, we can go ahead and mill this slot. It's a nice job for the horizontal mill. And while we're at it, we may as well cut a slot down here to get this side face, and then we can just remove this material that will be left. And also, while we're at it, we may as well put a slot down here to get this face here. And again, it'll leave a bulk of material to take out So to get my reference I'm just going to push it up against the corner there and tighten the vise. I'm sitting on a parallel. The block's all square so it should be fine. Set my dial to zero. I'll try and take it in one cut. Hopefully I won't regret it. Okay, so we'll put a slot down here to get this face along here. Now this side of the uh, rocking shaft has actually got this um, rectangular slot cut in. There was an article in the Model Engineer magazine by a Mr. Saxby who built a 5 inch gauge lion and he recommended some um, modifications to the valve gear. 
So he recommended this slot be actually enclosed at the top to give it extra strength. And to do that you would also need to extend the length of the slot. So what I've done is uh, off camera on the drilling machine I drilled a 4mm hole and I positioned it in the centre of the slot. Later on we can use that as a reference uh, and mill the slot to 3 16 wide and I think it's half an inch long. So I've deburred all the edges and we'll just put that in. Keep it down on the parallel up against the cutter. Tighten the vise. That's what you get when you're used with working in metric and you switch to imperial. I've miscalculated the divisions on the vertical dial, so I've made it slightly too deep. However, I've uh, had a bit think about it, and I think I can get away with it. Um, I've got a little bit of a cunning plan, which will actually add a bit of a feature. But that's for later on. Okay, that's then done that far. They should mash together. Oh yeah. There's no play there hardly. That's just perfection. So the next part uh, would be to put this rectangular section in. Which goes here. So we'll set that up in the mill. So I've got a 4mm dowel in the chuck there and the vise when I slacken it off will be loose. So I can line that up into the 4mm hole. There we go. And then just use a square. Square up the vise, set the digit read out to zero. Okay, so now I've got a 4mm cutter in there and I've worked out my coordinates in the x and y direction to rough this out. Uh, so once I'm finished with a 4mm cutter, I'll come in with a 2mm cutter and finish it off. That gives us a 1mm radius in the corners to file out later. Okay, just trimming it to length now.
Okay, there we are. So we need to generate the uh, radius on this part now. So what we'll do is we'll uh, put it on a mandrel in the spin indexer and mill some faucets around there and then file them nice and smooth. Okay, we're going 10 degree increments. So there's the uh, error I made when I was on the horizontal mill and went too deep with the cutter. So to get over this problem I'm going to put it in the lathe and machine a recess in here to take this out. I've checked the material thickness that's left and there's plenty and it'll add a little bit of a feature. So it just remains to uh, file this profile, it's got a slight taper with the radius, and the other side's tapered. So once again, to help assist that I've made some uh, hardened filing uh, discs to use as a guide.
Okay, I've given a little bit of a polish. I'll get a bit more of a polish later on, probably on the final assembly. I've also gone ahead and made the uh, rocking shaft bracket pins. I've put a spiral oil groove in. Hopefully it'll help keep it lubricated. So this is how they go together. The pin goes through there. And this is the bracket done in the previous video. That screws in there. I've left the plain portion on the shank of the thread there. So that I can come in later on and put a little grip screw in here. To keep that in place. So this is where it goes on the engine. So this connects to the valve rod which operates the valve and the other end connects to the eccentric strap 